It is 2021 and we are starting the new year with a new studio setup and talking about Emily in Paris season two. Did they learn their lesson when showing expat life in Europe or not? Let's talk about it. Hello, Yenlieblings, I'm Madi, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in Southern Germany since 2014. So first I have to say, I am so glad to be back after taking these last two weeks off. Um, as you can see, we redid the studio. We actually taken two days just to clean it out because it was actually used as storage. Um, it was actually my sister-in-law's childhood room and there was also stuff for my brother-in-law and it was getting to the point where we were just running out of room for the stuff that we needed to store in here, including, you know, like filming and thus it made it less fun to film in here because it was getting rather crowded. <laughs> I also spent the time getting a lot of reading done and getting a great start on my audiobook only to find out that my microphone wasn't that good. So now I have to get in, I had to get a new one and start over. <laughs> yeah. And then I also watched like um, Encanto on Disney Plus like three times, four times. I'm watching it right now. <laughs> Actually, I want to do a video on Encanto and talk about how excited I am that Disney is going in the right direction in terms of inclusive storytelling. The only thing Disney has ever done for us Peruvians is give us the Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. Like I said, I definitely want to, there's a whole, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack in that and I do a whole video on it. And if you are interested, let me know in the comments below and I may just do it anyway. <laughs> So enough rambling and speaking of culture portrayed in the media, today we're going to talk about Emily in Paris season two. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that my, my monitor's over here now. What do you think of my lighting, huh? The cool effect? <laughs> this was a Christmas present from my husband where I can actually switch the lighting for fun effects. And uh, I thought it'd be really funny when we were talking about like America or Peru. Or Deutschland! <laughs> yeah, I know. So the lighting doesn't necessarily quite work for the German flag, you know, the Schwarzrot gold. But um, if you are going to complain, I will totally turn the lighting to the Belgian flag and then like nobody wins. So we're back to this. <laughs> anyway, I did a video in the way, way back where I talked about the show Emily in Paris, well, season one, and how it painted an unrealistic portrait of being an American living in Europe. And I would know because I'm an American in Europe, <laughs> people were pissed. Like expats were pissed because it was obviously written by someone who hadn't actually lived abroad. It was created by Darren Starr, the creator of Sex and the City, and he claims it was a romanticized story of his own study abroad, allegedly. Tra trying to figure out where I'd read it and where I'd, uh, where I'd heard about that, I can't find it, which is why I'm saying allegedly. But sorry, sugar, studying abroad and actually living abroad are two different things. And I would know because I have done both. <laughs> I studied abroad in Spain back in 2000 <coughs> when I was in university and it is a huge difference. Uh, you do get a more romanticized view because you are actually cocooned uh, within your American program um, with the other Americans and you actually can get away with with uh, with not really knowing needing to know the language as much and so it is in that respect, Emily in Paris is correct. Um, yeah, uh, I had actually noticed this like difference more distinctly whenever I would go out. Uh, so I was studying in Sevilla. Um, what there was, it was a world of difference between when I was going out with my Spanish cousins versus when I went out with my friends in the American program. It was a completely different experience. So I get where he's coming from, but it's annoying because it was it was off. And there are things that, in my opinion, needed to be tweaked. But at the same time, though, when when asked about it, he treats it like it's an all or nothing, which kind of annoys me. It's very American. It's either, you know, one or the other. It's like no gray in between. So you see in a recent uh, interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Darren said, if it were about a character who came to France and spoke perfect French and knew her place in a French company and behaved according to all cultural dictates there wouldn't be a show. 
but expats weren't asking for perfection. She didn't need, she didn't need to speak perfect French. We just wanted her to know some French because realistically, no company would have taken her if she knew nothing of the local language as she did in the beginning of the show. She also didn't need to know her place in a French company, at least not even 100%. So um, if you're new here, hi, uh, yes, uh, I'm an American in Germany, but I'm also, I'm actually Peruvian American. I grew up in a Peruvian American household and I have committed my share of faux pas when I studied and spent my summers in Peru. It still happens even if it's a culture you grew up with. And I think the only way to be 100% perfect in said culture is essentially to have grown up 100% immersed in that culture, which I wasn't, I you know, grew up mostly in the States. So uh, other, otherwise, I mean, you're still going to make mistakes. Like there was no need to do this whole all or nothing thing, Darren. But so in my opinion, Emily's French in season one should have been where Madeline's level of French was in season two. But we'll get into that. So anyway, back to season one. Season one had suffered a lot of backlash, not just from expats, but from the French who also took offense to the stereotypes, as well as lots of other reviewers everywhere who called it lazy writing, using stereotypes for cheap laughs. And in all honesty, resorting to stereotypes is lazy writing. It is, I said it in my last video and I stand by it. Also, the fact that it was nominated for two Golden Globes really set people off, especially because other better, like more superior shows were were snubbed and um actually this this outrage actually uncovered a huge scandal of the producers actually bribing members of the foreign press for the golden globes with lavish parisian hotel stays so that emily in paris would receive this nomination allegedly yeah it actually started a snowball effect that uncovered even more <laughs> shit behind the golden globes to the point where it's just been canceled this year i actually linked an entire like an article with the whole timeline in the description so way to go emily in paris so now we're in season two and how did it do so uh spoiler alert for both seasons one and two of emily in paris Overall, I think where Emily is in season two is where she should have been in season one, at least in terms of language acquisition. In my last video, I harped on her absolute no French because I did exactly as Emily did. I worked for a German company that had a site in the States and I was able to transfer from Chicago, just like Emily, to Southern Germany to do the same job. And I mean my same job. Emily is in marketing, I was a microbiologist, and regardless, I had to interview in German before the Germans were even open to the idea of me moving there. And trust me, I was not fluent in German at the time. Far from it. I sounded like a seven-year-old. I sounded like Madeline in season two, but in German. <laughs> Tout le monde travaille ici dans un open space? Uh, oui, sauf Sylvie qui a son propre bureau. Oh, on se rencontre en person. <laughs> yeah. And just like Emily, I had connections that helped me get my job, despite maybe not being as good at the language as I should have been, but I still had to know some. You're dealing with an infrastructure that is mainly in the language of that country, including forms, instructions, overall paperwork. It's more than just speaking the language and you have to know enough of this language to do the administrative part of your job. Like even the emails, they're not going to change anything to put it in English, guys. It's going to be in that language. You got to suck it up. So to assume that everything, all that little minutia is going to get changed to cater to that one American in the office is American narcissism at its best. So now in season two, we see Emily putting in more effort with French class and how hard it is and how she actually lost out on a client because of her lack of French. I was an improvement because that is more realistic. Actually, she lost the client because of the whole drama between Emily, Gabrielle and Camille, who they did hella dirty this season to make her a villain. But you know, I'm Latina, so I'm just eating up all this ridiculous melodrama. <laughs> My all-time favorite moment in both seasons came when Emily tried to write a letter in French to Camille to apologize for her terrible behavior and Camille responds with saying she doesn't understand what Emily's trying to say and calls her illiterate. Espèce de sociopathe analphabète. I cackled. I mean, I seriously ugly laughed. Best part. Glorious. We need more of that. <laughs> I have been where Emily was, but instead of trying to write an apology letter in French, it was a lab experiment in German. 
<laughs> I was also in charge of writing the meeting notes every week. And there were definitely a few times where my boss would review what I wrote and tell me straight up, what is this? I don't know what you're saying. Never called me illiterate, thank God. But like, <laughs> honestly, girl, I didn't know what I was saying either. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> But I mean, I will, but like those exercises really did help me work harder to improve my German. But like I said, I had expected Emily to come to France with like the same level of French that Madeline had, who apparently had a master's in French. Um, and if you got, forgot who Madeline was, she was the one who was supposed to go to France because she has a master's in French, but couldn't go because she got all pregno, pregno, <laughs> prego. But, um, yeah, so they, they keep saying how much she's got this master's in French, but I also found that also unrealistic. You see, as much as we Americans get shit about being bad at languages, which is, you know, not unfounded, I did have to take issue with this, be and it really came down to the claim of Madeline having a master's. You see, when I was an undergrad at Indiana University, I studied Spanish, German, French, and Russian. And each of those classes for undergrads were taught by masters or PhD students. So if Madeline had actually gotten her masters in French, she would have spent a good deal of her time while getting her masters also teaching French grammar day in and day out to those undergrads. So I had expected her French to be a lot better than it was. I expected it to be rusty and stumbly, like she was not going to be perfect. But what we got was someone who sounded like that they had taken French in high school and that's it. Or maybe even two years in undergrad, which is what I did in German <laughs> before I moved to Germany. It was only two years of undergrad and that's how I sounded. So I know I, and I mean, I know I harp on this language bit, but only because it is one of the biggest hurdles when moving to a new country. And while American optimism can get you pretty far, if you don't speak the language and you think you can fake it until you make it, um, it's not gonna work. <laughs> it's not a good look for you. Because trust me, I've tried to fake it until you make it and it did not work out. <laughs> I had to hunker down and learn the language. Like, well, not just learn the language, but like work on the grammar instead of just, you know, Pushing my way through it. I mean, it works. It works in, in, in a lot of ways, but it's... Mm, mm, mm. Also, Darren Starr claims that Emily was purposefully written to be annoying, which I absolutely do not believe. I think he's backtracking because he underestimated how much the ugly American trope is really not cute at all, and there was just no way to make it likable. Sorry, but writing 101, you can make a flawed character, but you have to make them relatable to make them likable enough for you to want them to succeed. Maybe that's why Americans who have never actually lived abroad still love Emily. They do find her relatable and don't see American entitlement as a serious flaw. And a big reason why I don't believe Darren is only now saying Emily was supposed to be annoying is because they spend so much of season two trying to make Emily look good in comparison by having even shittier characters around her. Alfie being the biggest one. He's an English financier who doesn't want to learn French, doesn't like France, has no intention of assimilating, and <gasps> doesn't like Emily at first. At first, you know, emphasis on the at first. His character was absolutely a response to several on-the-nose points of criticism from season one. Those being, every man Emily came into contact with automatically wanted to bone her. Those men were overwhelmingly white. By having someone be more a more extreme version of Emily in season one will just make her look better in comparison. Like I said, I like where Emily is now in season two, but that should have been season one. I don't think it would have gotten as much hate in some regards, but you know, that's my opinion. So now there's Madeline. I, like I said, Madeline, I really liked her. I, I like I said, expected her French to be a lot better. Um, absolutely not perfect guys. Like I'm definitely not, but I expected, um, it was, it was bad. It was really bad. I didn't like it. That I didn't like, but it is my only criticism of her. She is perfect as the cutthroat American businesswoman who really clashes with the French folk at Savoir. I think this tension needed to be stretched out throughout the entire season and not just a few episodes. 
because I think if you really want to show a culture clash, like really have two businesses from two countries try to work together, especially when you have an American company owning the second company and pushing American values onto the other culture. Like it, that's good stuff. Like that was good. I had experienced this in the opposite direction, German company in the States. So I definitely, I felt that like it's, it's, it's really good. So, um, but there, you know, like as, as much as I am criticizing a lot, a, a, a lot, especially with the language, cause really guys like, ah, man. Um, there are other things I did like about the season. One of them being more French. Like the characters spoke French when Emily wasn't in the room as they should. Um, I actually found out that when they did season one, the reason why there was so much English was the intention was for the show to be streaming through Paramount, which is American. And they were like, well, Americans don't like reading subtitles, which I mean, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but now that it's on Netflix and it's been, you know, shown to an international audience and it even shows that Americans actually don't care to read subtitles, they're okay with having, you know, people speak in their native language because, you know, so that's why in season two, there's even more of that, which I'm glad. Um, yeah, it should have been that in the first place, but I, I'm not gonna lie, I do understand where they're coming from with season one. But so I'm glad they're fixing that. Um, another scene that I really like was um, Emily having coffee with their Ukrainian woman, Petra, where the only language they had in common was French and watching them trying to navigate time together with their limited French, like that was brilliant. Um, but unfortunately that, that scene was soured by having Petra uh, have a penchant, <laughs> like see what I did there, Petra having a penchant for shoplifting, proving once again that stereotypes are both harmful and lazy writing. In fact, the cultural minister of Ukraine has submitted a complaint to Netflix for such a harmful betrayal. <sighs> Yikes. They're like, oh, you know, we can't do American and French stereotype, but who can we insult now? We'll do the Ukrainians. <clears throat> That's not good, guys. Not good. Honestly, like the scene up until that point was great. I really didn't think the shoplifting, shoplifting bit was necessary. Like it cheapened it in my opinion. They just left it. Um, there is so much hilarity that it can ensue by having two people try to navigate with one common language that they neither of them speak well. That honestly was enough. <sighs> Anyway, another bit I really enjoyed was watching Emily start to embrace French work culture. There is an episode in very, uh, like one of the earlier episodes in season two, where it was brought up numerous times to Emily that it is illegal to work on the weekends in France. It's not that extreme in Germany, but there are stricter labor laws in place compared to the states in order to protect workers. As a result, I did find myself in similar situations as Emily, like, I mean, Think about it. If you are doing what you're passionate about in your free time, is it really work? I mean, like Emily loves her job in marketing, which is actually what I'm doing now. I'm in my, I'm in my, I went from microbiology to translation to marketing. It's kind of weird. But anyway, um, it is a job that can easily blur the lines between fun and work. Emily goes to a hotel in Saint Tropez because she was there on a fun weekend trip and then decides to use that opportunity to check on this agreement that they had struck, or their company had struck with one of their clients with this hotel. And as an American, you, you don't think much of it because you're already there. It does, it takes like a few minutes. You're still already enjoying your time. But for from a French point of view, it is work and you can't do that. You know, like, like I said, Europeans have a more distinct divide between work and play compared to the States. And I have also had a hard time adjusting since I'm, I, you know, I grew up with the American hustle culture. We are taught that if you are not spending every minute making money, then you are wasting your time. Ooh, yeah. But like Emily with time, I learned to embrace that balance. And I found that it has actually helped me be more effective with my work when I truly embrace the play. So it, it, I mean, it's been overall better for my own mental health. So I appreciate that it was covered in the show. Overall, I think season two did a lot better and technically that should have been season one in terms of where Emily should have been. And I mean, as someone who came in and actually tried to make an effort with French culture while still being shitty at French and that's totally fine, you know, just she needed something. Not like, oh, I studied Rosetta Stone on the flight here. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> the writers claimed that this was their intent all along, but I don't believe them. Too many of the fixes this season were too on the nose with the criticisms from season one. But, you know, at the same time, though, I'm glad they're trying. And will I watch season three? Hells to the yes. <laughs> I am here for the terribly written love triangle between Emily, Camille, and Gabrielle. And yeah, it is terribly written. 
But you know, remember, I grew up with telenovelas, so I love this kind of crap. I am invested. <laughs> so what do you think of Emily in Paris? Are you a fan? Do you hate it? Everything's valid. Get in fights in the comments below. <laughs> And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know that you like this kind of content and you want to see more. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you'd like to see on this channel. If you want more info on my books and newsletter, check them out in the description below. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, or the Facebooks. And that's it. Until next time. Adi!